Now, you have extensive knowledge in the meat industry, so I'd like to ask you a few questions about the state of our peers. Firstly, in your view, is legacy media, as we understand it, the newspapers, the free-to-air TV, the radio, is that industry in trouble? Dare we say it? Is it facing a form of extinction? Oh, look, I don't think so because they've been around a long time. So they're to the credit of each of them, and they're looking at new ways to try and regenerate uh, their audience. But they're under pressure. There's no doubt about it. And the concept of appointment television, for instance, is under real threat uh, in that people want to pick and choose when they want to see or hear what, what they want to see and hear. And, uh, I mean, I, I know people who say, oh, I, I don't watch any of the new services at six, which is their decision. I spend most of my time yelling at them myself. But, you know... <laughs> You, you, you want to actually find out if there are more people out there like you. And I think the critical thing is a range of voices. The, the, the worst part about, as you put it, the legacy media is there's a sort of laziness about a lot of them, uh, not all of them, but a number of them. They, they think, oh, we'll go down the safe path. We, we don't want to offend anyone. Well, hang on, what do you mean offend anyone? You're not going to offend anyone if you're talking up Australia, talking about our history, talking about our culture talking about the things that made us into what we are, uh, but instead, of course, they want to make us feel bad, feel under threat. And I think a lot of middle Australia is just getting sick of it. Alexandra, there's a war going on right now against woke. I think people are standing up and really getting angry about this whole business of, of the wokeism. Uh, this, my father, who's a fair age, as you may imagine, he, he said to me, what's this woke thing? And I said, oh, apparently... Uh, you're super awake to what's going on around you. He said, it sounds like a whole lot of rubbish to me. And, and it's really important, good on your dad, it's most important that we question stuff. And uh, you talk about schools, Alexandra, the problem to my mind is that kids are told what to learn, not how to learn. Um, picking up books, reading books, uh, asking questions, having a contrary view that's considered, I think they're constructive ways to discover a bigger, bigger and better future. Uh, just falling in with the crowd shouldn't be the way we go. Well, I think you're right. I do believe that legacy media will survive in one way or another, but I don't think all of legacy media will survive. I think the, the market will have shrunk for them in, when the future comes around. Uh, I also, if it's actually really scary, if you talk to somebody who's under 30, the chances that they've ever listened to radio, ever picked up a newspaper yeah. or ever watched freeway TV is quite small. So that means that as this goes, this story goes on, there's going to be a rapid change whether people like it or not. But I often think about the rise of the internet as a new medium to be a similar change to what we went through when stone tablets and bits of papyrus were replaced by books. Because not only has the physical quantity of information changed, the type of content changes with the medium. And the medium can, and it does make a big difference. In the case of the ancient world, books allowed us to preserve and share a much larger chunk of information. And so the length and depth of our writing increased. We added words to our language. We embellished descriptions. Now, language went from being a utility to an art, and it sort of reached the height in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, and we can yep. see that with the mass production of books all of a sudden. But, Gary, yep. are we heading in the other direction where social media favours short, high-impact content, tweets are short, TikToks are short, Facebook algorithms are short? Is this going to change the way and the type of information that we report on and even our content of our entertainment as well? Look, I think we're being dumbed down deliberately. And remember, for much of that period of time, you're talking about books, a lot of people couldn't read and write. Uh, they just couldn't read and write. They couldn't read the language they spoke. And we see a lot of that in our refugee cases out of places like Africa where they are not fully literate and they can't read and write the language they speak. So when we teach them English, we have to actually teach them their old language first so they can translate their old language into the English language. So, you know, having the ability to read and write is, is a rare thing. Uh, some years ago, and I, I, I don't know what the statistics like now, but when I was a minister in government... We knew that 50% of people on building sites in a place like here in Queensland could not read and write to the proper literacy level uh, that was necessary. Yeah, they could see danger, caution, stop, go and all that, but ask them to read a contract and understand it, they never did. Uh, and yet countries like Vietnam have like a 97% literacy rate, so government and others can communicate on billboards in the middle of Ho Chi Minh City because people can read and write. So. I think we've got to always challenge ourselves to get those core skills back. I think that's an education task that's sadly missing. But but kids are being told to resent and regret the past and 
tearing down of statues, be it Queen Victoria or Captain Cook and all this stuff happening in the Socialist Republic of Victoria, you just know that this is just dumbing us down again. And, and when you're stupid, you get manipulated. And when you get manipulated, you get taken over. We're going to lose stuff if we don't get ourselves clever. Well, I will actually ask you about that question in more depth in a second. But uh, sure. I, from working in retail, we did notice, even in the 10 years that I worked retail, that the level of literacy amongst the staff that we were hiring, and these are 16 to 18-year-olds, declined significantly yep. to yep. the point that some of our yep. cluster managers, who weren't very old themselves, were having to, having to retrain children how to write emails, how to write letters to customers, and even how to do basic, basic maths because they couldn't count the shoes, which is, you know, a frightening development of uh, young adults being released into the workforce. But when we talk about content, is this desire for punchy, condensed content changing the way the news works? Because now we're not waiting for the news headlines to come the next day. Twitter's already put the headlines out in 100 characters the day before. Is that going to alter news content? Well, I, I think it will because it's happening even amongst our so-called leaders. I mean, our political leaders now think in staccato language. They think in 144 characters, the length of a tweet. There's no big vision. There's no kind of come on, come with me kind of thing. And during even the dark and hurrying days of war over the last 100 years, we still had leaders who said there's a purpose to this. You know, we need to do this. Not everyone has to be a Shakespearean scholar Alexandra, but they need to be able to ask questions, to be part of something bigger, to contribute in their own way. And whether it's on a pick and shovel, to use the old parlance, or whether it's, you know, designing the great skyscrapers of the future, you know, people with skills need to work together, but for a common ambition. And, and I think, frankly, we're being weakened to the point where things are going to get so bad that we're just going to accept the little bits that we get. And you're seeing it in suburbs which are being run down, that the middle class are being tampered and hit by, by extra taxes, more forms, more fees, more processes. It's just weakening everybody. So, yeah, what we're seeing in our social media, frankly, is reflecting what we're getting out of the elites, the political class. They don't want us to think beyond the next five minutes. And somebody's got to. I, I for the life of me, do not understand why we have got 25 and 50-year plans about what Australia is going to look like. How are we going to land this big beast of a country? But none of that language is coming out of any of our political leaders, except maybe Peter Dutton is at least talking about nuclear as being a viable solution for cheaper base low power. Yes, well, Dutton has been um, nudged toward nuclear quite relentlessly by commentators, but he has got the message, he has seen the line. Yeah. He is heading yeah. in the direction that people have told him, that's election victory, go that way, and he is going in that direction. But an interesting thing, just before we go quickly to a break, is if you were to Google a new news story that's come around, something happens, Google it and have a look at the results that come out. Every headline from all the news publications is almost identical because now they're writing headlines to match the Google algorithm. So we've lost any kind of diversity of thought, any kind of uh, difference of opinion because they want their name to be the first headline on the Google search and that's all it's about these days. 